So with this, uh, we hope that we have covered um, the, the points that we promised at the beginning. We explained about the architecture, the definition, report definition, the change in 11G. We have quickly explained how to develop a template using the online builder. And we have explained how to use the new data modeler for um, complex reports of uh, like invoices. And we have ex very quickly explained how to upgrade from VA Publisher 10G to 11G. And uh, now uh, I would like to um, uh, pass the word to uh, Amy. She will have uh, some announcements to do. And um, i let you now, Amy. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, excellent job going through VA Publisher. Uh, it was very informative. Um, I just briefly wanted to uh, uh, announce a couple different things coming up on 11G. We do have uh, some workshops. We're in the middle of doing a workshop series uh, where we've scheduled six workshops uh, that would be conducted in 2010, and we're going to continue right on into 2011, and we're in the process of getting those workshops scheduled as well. Um, for the remainder of the year, we do have workshops scheduled November 2nd in San Francisco, November um, uh, 9th in Dallas, and December 9th in New York. So uh, if you live in those cities and you're interested in attending an 11G free hands-on workshop, uh, certainly go out to our website and uh, regis register for those workshops. Uh, we also have webinar series going on November 30th, which we're going to be covering um, EPM uh, integration with OVIE 11G. So we'll be taking a deeper look at VS-based integration. We'll be looking at how you can take planning information, so Hyperion planning information, and integrate it with OVIE 11G. And also, if you're an HFM user, how you can integrate that in with OVIE 11G. So if you have some Hyperion users uh, in your organization, please uh, feel free to pass the invite on to them as well. Um, and then finally in December, December 16th, our webinar is going to be covering uh, the 10G to 11G upgrade. And uh, we will be covering uh, screenshots and doing an in-depth overview on how that upgrade looks. Finally, um, VICG is, uh, we've created a readiness assessment uh, that we're starting to work on with our customers to help you understand when you're ready to upgrade to 11G. And so the first part of the readiness assessment is a questionnaire, uh, probably would take less than 10 minutes, high-level questions to understand standards and certain things inside your environment. We're starting to distribute that questionnaire to our customers, and then once that questionnaire is completed, we are scheduling um, uh, road mapping sessions with uh, our 11G task force to start working on your roadmap on when it makes sense for you to upgrade to 11G. So if you're interested in that, you know, certainly send out an email. Um, like I said, we are getting those out to our customers currently and uh, starting to work on that as well. So those were, uh, for the most part, the main announcements. Um, I do want to announce our training uh, winners. So on all of our webinars, we always uh, give away some free training tokens. And uh, we have two winners uh, for today's session. Uh, the first winner is Deanna Bacon uh, from Mercury Marine. And so Deanna, you'll be receiving a free training token to take any class that you uh, would like. Our 11G classes, some of them are now out on our website. Uh, and so you can go out there and take a peek at those. Um, obviously, it's good for 10G classes as well. Um, and then our second winner is Jeremy Yu of Motorola. So uh, you'll be getting an email uh, in regards to those training tokens and uh, look forward to um, getting you some free training. So thanks everyone for attending. Hopefully this covered uh, some good information and knowledge for you on the OBIEE 11G VI Publisher. If there were questions that were received during today's webinar, um, you know, we will uh, capture those questions and put them out in a frequently asked question uh, white paper that will be attached to the webinar video. And all the webinar videos are getting put up to our website as well as to the YouTube channel. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. So, um, if uh, I, we, can, we can share the presentation, certainly we can. Um, I will have just to uh, find out how we can uh, send this uh, presentation to all of you if you want to download it. Uh, we, we, will, we will announce that. Um, the second question is, um, can you nest 
uh, templates. The templates can be nested in a way of uh, the following concept. You can have sub-templates. So you, you define your main template and you can define another template that can be invoked the, uh, inside the first by using a special command which is called sub-template. In that way you can nest mm. templates. So yes, you can do that. Um, now, there is another question from Jeremy that it, it, he asks um, he, whether the VA publisher and XML, XML publisher is the same thing. Um, I would say I would say no, uh, but they have common things like um, the, the way that the, the template is parsed and the, the way that the data is merged to generate the output. But the, the standalone version, the VA publisher standalone version has more more features than the XML publisher version embedded in eBusiness Suite. So, uh, and, and, and Jeremy also comments that Oracle suggests to use VA publisher for reporting against EDS. Um, maybe I'm suspecting that they are recommending it because VA publisher standalone has more features and, and you can run reports in that way, uh, taking advantage of those features not available in XMLP embedded in eBusiness Suite. Um, okay, um, so here we have another question. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, is the master detail concept, masters from answers and the details from publisher, um, is, is the master detail concept new? Um, um, well, it, it's difficult to say, but it, because uh, we we had in VA Publisher a way to um, generate a report, whether it was a summary report, and if you wanted to see the detail, you could also uh, drill down into that detail by embedding a URL link into the report. So um, I would say it's not really a new concept, uh, uh, but uh, now. Um, there is another question asking how do you appropriately address multiple reports built from a single data model to ensure any changes are propagated and do not break all the reports? Well, um, remember, it depends on where you are making the change. If you are making the change in the data model, that means that you are adding perhaps an additional column. That additional column will have to be uh, we have to be included in the templates, right? So, so if you're changing your data model to add additional information, you will have to change your, your templates anyway. Now, if you're changing your templates for using the same data model that has not changed, then why not create a new template based on that data model? So in that way, you, you don't have to break the other templates. Um, so, so I, I guess, uh, I have addressed that question. Um, is bursting is still supported, and how does it look in 11 GHS? Uh, that that is something that uh, I still have to investigate because there are many things that are new. I can respond to you uh, offline on this, uh, Roland, and that's a good question. Um, there is an additional question: Do you plan to conduct a BA? P11G hands-on workshop in San Francisco area. Um, we have some plans to do some training or uh, workshop sessions in different uh, cities of, of the country. Uh, I will have to find out whether there will be one in San Francisco. Um, we also plan to use our questions and answers and, and the answer will be posted on, a, on a, our web, website and uh, if I didn't respond to them, um, in, in this session. So, uh, thank you very much for attending the meeting and um, I hope that I have covered most of the things that you were looking for or expecting in this presentation until uh, now, for now, until the next time. Thank you.